The dog family, from which modern pets descended, originated in North America about 40 million years ago. Another 20 million years later, it reached its peak. But something happened, and the dogs began to disappear quickly, one species after another. Only recently have the scientists discovered it happened because of cats. It's a well-known fact that dogs and cats can't stand each other. In 2018, researchers at the University of Lincoln did an extensive study to find out if this feud can be confirmed from a statistical point of view. As a result, 57% of owners admitted their cats hissed at dogs or hit them, 18% said their dogs threatened cats, and less than 10% of cats and only 1% of dogs ever harming the other animal. That is, the reason lies not in the natural aggression of specific pets, something is going on between cats and dogs. And of course, this didn't start yesterday, or in 2018. Stories about how cats and dogs can't get along with each other can be found throughout the history of mankind. In 1560, people said they fight like cats and dogs about married couples who quarreled all the time. But I'm certain even the ancient Greeks noticed the antagonistic relationship because, well, you know, they generally had a good eye for detail. Perhaps genetic memory is the reason for the feud between these animals. Studies show that cats and dogs can remember events that happened many years ago. That is, if one of them was aggressive during an encounter, the other can hold a grudge for a long time. Maybe this could grow into a fear of all canine or feline species, or vice versa. Hey cat, let's play. Many months later. Hey cat, let's play. So maybe cats and dogs simply access the memory of their ancestors and learn that representatives of the other species are their bitter enemies. Yes, it sounds weird, and a little like Assassin's Creed games. But there is some real evidence in favor of genetic memory. No Templar order or jumping from monuments into piles of hay. It's all about mice. Scientists have found that if mice that have already cleared the maze have offspring, their babies won't need to start their journey from scratch. They seem to already have some idea how to navigate in the maze and where to go. This shows that animals may have some kind of memory in their genetic material, and that material is carried on. Of course, having some clues about the maze is not the same thing as a centuries-old feud, but what if it was genetics that caused it? Remember the dogs that disappeared from North America? Scientists are quite sure that the cats who came from Asia were the reason for that, and this, in turn, could be recorded somewhere in the genome. The cats turned out to be better adapted, more effective in hunting, and literally left the local predators without prey, dooming them to starvation. Things like that can't be forgotten. Although it's weird this could actually happen, I mean, can you imagine wild dogs? These include wolves, and they are real killing machines. How could they lose to some cats who just arrived? Perhaps the reason lies in the way of hunting and so-called weapon. Dogs chase their prey at high speed until it's exhausted, while cats prefer a sudden ambush. Also, cats pull out their claws only when they attack, which means they don't wear them out during a chase. It seems like such a small factor, but there are no small factors in the evolutionary race for survival. 40 extinct dog species confirm this. But let's put aside the extinct species and the epic feuds between prehistoric cats and dogs. Too many years have passed since then. The balance of power must have shifted, or hasn't it? Cats have a strong body, and thanks to the strong muscles of their hind legs, they can jump six times their own height. Don't forget about the ability to climb so high that you have to call rescuers for help, plus sharp teeth, claws that can scratch the enemy's eyes out, flexibility, bombs… Run! Okay, okay, they have no bombs. For now, anyway. The average dog runs roughly as fast as the average cat, but the dog can hardly climb a tree. The only chance to win is to grab the cat with its mouth. So if both animals were the same size, the dog would stand no chance. A good example is a fight between the wolf and the lynx. Many experts believe the wolf is superior to the lynx when it comes to protecting its territory, but apparently lynxes can only be killed by other lynxes. At the same time, male lynxes can easily deal with wolves, especially young ones. Of course, I'm not talking about attacking an entire pack. This attempt is doomed to failure from the start, but attacking a lone wolf is a different story. Here the lynx has such good chances of winning, it may well affect the entire population, eliminating wolves one by one. Turns out cats are something like a super weapon created by nature. Not as cool as honey badgers, of course, but somewhere close. Here's a fact for you. In Australia, roaming domestic cats kill 390 million animals a year, including reptiles, birds, and mammals. 
This is an average of 186 animals, mostly native species, per one roaming domestic cat a year. Can you imagine how big this figure is? Most people don't wonder what their pet does when they let it go for a walk. Well, it might be playing with butterflies, chasing birds, maybe catching a mouse. Come on, it can't be leaving for a killing spree. Today, about 2.7 million Australian domestic cats are free to roam and hunt wherever they want. But the reason is not only nobody restricts their movements, the cat's DNA has not changed much since they were domesticated. That is, the cats that used to be wild but then began to catch mice near human dwellings and those cats that purr in your lap are almost the same animals. In terms of genetics, of course. Unlike dogs, they were not subjected to rigorous selection for certain qualities. People didn't look for or breed cats that were good for a certain task. They were already perfect as they were. So cats kept their wild abilities, and dogs, well, dogs have changed a lot over millions of years. Coexistence with humans made them much weaker than the wolves, their closest relatives. Wolves are smarter than domestic dogs because they're used to constantly thinking in order to survive. They're much stronger and have more stamina. But what's more important is that wolves live in packs. It was the pack that allowed them to survive from ancient times to the present day. As Dominic Toretto would say, what's real is family. I don't have friends. I got family. But let's leave the wolves for now. As I said, only staying in a pack can save them from wildcats. What about pets? Why do cats hate dogs? And why, according to statistics, it's cats who most often attack first? Perhaps the reason may lie in domestication. Since dogs were domesticated earlier, they can better control their behavior. Also, you probably know how difficult it can be to train a cat. This is not an animal that will happily obey for a treat. Oh, and don't forget that a cat is often smaller than a dog, which means that sometimes cats have to defend themselves, as a precaution so to speak, even if nothing threatens them. I've already mentioned that dogs and cats have different hunting strategies, and this makes it difficult to establish contact. Many cats perceive dogs as a threat and try to run away, and dogs in turn have instincts that command them to chase the fleeing animal. Inconvenient. However, there is one more factor that isn't helpful for establishing mutual understanding between cats and dogs. They speak different languages, literally. Not only because some meow and others bark, even their body language is different. For example, if a dog wags its tail, it means it's in a friendly mood. When a cat does the same, it's a sign of fear and aggression. No wonder there are misunderstandings all the time. <laughs> And don't think this happens only with animals since they're not smart enough. Simple gestures, even those you're used to, may have quite a different meaning in another country. Two fingers forming the Latin V usually stand for victory, but not in Australia, where this sign, if turned with the palm toward you, is the equivalent of a rude single finger gesture. It's said that in the Middle East, a thumbs up can mean a dirty insult, just like the OK sign in Brazil. You get it, right? If people can't agree about simple gestures, what would you expect from animals? Maybe some of the viewers are now reaching for the keyboard to write in the comments that their cat and dog simply adore each other, never fight, and in general, what I said is not true. Can these animals live in harmony? Of course they can. Calm demeanor, growing together since childhood, a big age difference, there are indeed ways to live in peace. But it'll still take many years before cats stop being aggressive to dogs. Some scientists believe they are only halfway domesticated. If we have enough time, then one day we'll see completely different cats. They may be more loving, more trainable, and more in control of their behavior. And homeless feral cats will eventually grow larger, like the size of a puma, because they'll hunt animals and get food from people. In many countries, there are rumors of wildcat populations that have grown to enormous sizes. In the future, these myths may become reality. See you later.